Welcome to our video edition of Learn with LBSI for the month of December 2021. For this month, we will demonstrate how to use the deposit module within SAP Business One to demonstrate incoming cash and check transactions, as well as credit card transactions that do not use a third-party credit card add-on to process directly with the credit card gateways. This module will be used to record the physical deposit transaction once you deposit funds into your company's bank account. You can also specify additional information like which branch the funds were deposited into, as well as who the user was that deposited the funds. To begin, let's navigate to Banking, Deposits, and Deposit to open the Deposit module. Once the screen opens, towards the top left portion of the window will be the deposit number associated with the particular deposit transaction. This number is based off of the numbering series that is defined for your deposits. Below that in the Considered Until field will be the date until which checks with the same or earlier date will be considered. Therefore, any checks that have a posting date after the specified date will not be considered. If you are depositing money that is in a different currency, you can adjust the deposit currency field accordingly. In the drop down below the deposit currency field, you will be able to choose to deposit the amounts into a GL account or business partner account and you'll need to define the appropriate GL account or business partner in the corresponding field to which you would like to apply the deposited transactions to. Towards the top right portion of the header will be the deposit date field. Here is where you can define which date the deposit transaction posts to your system. This date will default to the current date. Moving on to the bank, branch, and account fields, you will be able to specify the specific information about the bank where the deposit transaction is occurring. These fields are for your reference only, and once you enter in information once, they will stay populated with the most recent values the next time you add a deposit transaction. Next, in the bank reference field, is where you can enter in the reference assigned to the deposit by your bank. This value will appear in the Reference 2 field on the journal entry created, and thus in the Reference 2 column on the Bank Reconciliation screen. Below that in the Payer field will be where you can enter in the specific name of the individual who made the deposit at the bank. With all the header information out of the way, let's move on now to the specific tab level information. There will be four tabs on the deposit module, Checks, Credit Card, Cash, and Attachments tab. We'll begin first with the Checks tab. The Checks tab will be used to deposit any incoming check transactions or incoming credit card transactions that are not processed via a credit card add-on. In the Display Checks From field, you can select which GL account the deposit transactions from. Changing this field will adjust which transactions are displayed in the table below. This field will default to the account entered in the Checks Receive field on your GL Account Determination Setup window. If you want to locate a specific check number from the table, you can simply type in the number in the Find Check Number field, and the screen will highlight the check number you entered and automatically select it. In the main table portion of the window is where you can begin to select all the transactions that were deposited into the bank account. These should be compared to the actual deposit transaction that occurred with your bank, so you can make sure that all the necessary transactions that were a part of the deposit are selected. The transactions that do appear in this window will have the posting date of the associated incoming payment, check number, as well as the bank information that was entered on the incoming payment transaction. As a note, transactions with a check number of 1 should indicate that it is an incoming credit card transaction was not processed via a credit card add-on within your system. You will also see the business partner associated with the incoming payment transactions as well as the specific amount of each transaction. In the primary form item column, you can specify a specific cash flow relevant option to assign to the transaction. Finally, the incoming payment document number will appear in the incoming payment column and if you select the golden arrow, you will be taken to the incoming payment document. As you begin to select transactions, you will notice towards the bottom of the table, there will be the combined total of each transaction selected. You can see how many checks overall are selected at the bottom of the checks and bank columns, as well as the total amount being deposited at the bottom of the check amount column. 
Towards the bottom portion of the screen will be some additional fields. The General Remarks field is where you can enter in any additional information about the deposit transaction. These remarks will appear on the new journal entry that is added. After you add the deposit transaction, the journal entry number will appear in the transaction number field. Finally, the reconcile amounts at the deposit checkbox, when checked, will automatically reconcile the selected transactions with the journal entry that is added for the deposit. After all the transactions have been selected and information updated, you can proceed to select the add button to add the deposit transaction. Now if you go back to the deposit you just added, you will see the journal entry number in the transaction number field for the journal entry that was added with the deposit transaction, and if you select the golden arrow next to it, you will be taken to the journal entry. With the check tab out of the way, let's move on now to the credit card tab. This tab is to be used if any credit card add-ons require you to use the deposit module in conjunction with their add-on. Towards the top of the tab, in the Find Voucher Number field, you will be able to search for a specific voucher number, and just like with the checks, after you enter in the number, the row will be highlighted and selected. Next, in the Display the Following Vouchers dropdown, you will be able to filter the results by a specific account. In the main portion of the window, just like with the checks tab, you will need to select each transaction that was recently deposited. You will find information such as the posting date of the incoming payment, credit card and payment method information, the business partner associated with the transaction, number of payments, document total, and the incoming payment document number. Just like before, you will also see the total number of transactions as well as the total dollar amount selected towards the bottom portion of the table. After you make all the necessary updates, you can proceed to select the Add button to add the deposit transaction. Now let's move on to the Cash tab. The first field you will see is the GL Account field. This is the account where the funds will be taken out of and moved to the header GL account. This GL account will default to the account setup in the Cash on Hand field that is located in your GL Account Determination Setup window. The name of the GL account selected will appear to the right of the window alongside the current balance in the account. Please note that if there is a zero or negative balance in the GL account, you will not be able to deposit funds from that account. Moving on to the amount field, this is where you can enter in the cash amount that you are depositing. The final field on the cash tab is the primary form item field. This can be used to specify the cash flow line item that should be associated with the transaction if the bank account specified is cash flow relevant. Once all the fields have been updated, you can proceed to add the document. Finally, on the Attachments tab, you will be able to attach any document to the deposit transaction by selecting the Browse button and locating the file you want to attach. This can be very useful for attaching documents such as a deposit slip from your bank. Then, once you attach the document, you can simply select the row and press the Display button to view the attached document. With all the tabs out of the way, Let's take a look at how to cancel a deposit transaction that may have been added by mistake. While on the deposit you need to delete, simply right-click the background and select Cancel. Doing so will prompt a window mentioning that this is irreversible and that a reverse transaction will be added to the system in order to reopen the previous transactions. Select Yes and the deposit will be cancelled and the payment selected on the previous deposit will be reopened for you to select on a new deposit. Let's say you want to cancel only certain rows from a deposit instead of the entire transaction. If you only want to cancel a row from the deposit, you can right click the row you want to delete and select cancel row. Just like before, you will receive a system message stating that a reversal transaction will be created for the selected row. Another way that you can cancel a deposit is from the check register module. This module is located under banking, Incoming Payments, and Check Register. In the Check Register window, simply right-click the entry you want to cancel. After right-clicking, you will have two options to choose from, Cancel Deposit and Payment, or Cancel Deposit. Cancel Deposit and Payment will cancel the deposit and incoming payment transactions. 
cancel deposit will simply only cancel the deposit. Just like before, these options will create reversing transactions in your system. This month's tip of the day is useful for easily seeing all the available information inside of fields on your screen. This tip is great for when you have fields that cut off pieces of information held within the fields. In order to adjust all the column widths at once, you can do so by navigating to View, Fit Column Width. After doing so, all the columns will be adjusted so all the information in each field is visible. The deposit module within SAP Business One is great for having better visibility on the deposit transactions that occur within your company. Join us as we help you learn more about what SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.